Hi everyone, and welcome to Serving Intel's Because You Ask series, where we answer questions you've asked about the products we sell. I'm Dan Phelps, Senior Vice President of Sales for Serving Intel. Today, we will be answering questions about the Survey Robot, and to help us better understand the technology, we're pleased to have Jim Livingston, Vice President of Sales for Bear Robotics. Jim, is Survey meant to replace employees or complement the current staff? Well, thanks for having me, Dan. Um, great to great to be here today. You know, that's a great question, and we get it all the time. And my answer is there's a couple things. Number one is, of course, it depends on each location and the challenges that they're having, obviously. But I will always tell people the robot was designed to help amplify the human interaction. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that if that robot can do all that back and forth stuff that we don't want to do, the repetitive tasks, and allow the actual servers out front, for example, to provide even better service to me and you when we go out to eat, um, then we've accomplished what we tried to do. There are people, of course, that that may in some scenarios want to go to a contactless environment, maybe even during COVID. And if they want to do that, or if in a senior living facility as well, obviously, uh, if they want to have a contactless environment, that robot could act as the server. It just comes to the table. People can remove their own food. But in general, the goal is for servers to meet the food at the table where they didn't have to carry it. They didn't have to walk as far. So we like to say servers lift less and they walk less and ultimately they can potentially earn more. I have communities considering using the point of sale for uh, third party deliveries. So they'll have a third party delivery service like Uber Eats and the order flows into the community right through the POS and into the kitchen for the chef to make the meal. And Servi brings the food to the front door. And the use case might be something like uh, eight to midnight, using your kitchen when all the residents are asleep, but for a late night menu. And the security guard opens the door, lets the Uber driver in to get the food off of Servi and Servi runs back to get the next run. Uh, so we're, we're seeing it now to help generate revenue as well as add to the to the server's paycheck. Jim, as obvious as it might be to you and me, the robot itself has a pretty significant ROI. Can you just highlight some of the, the ROIs that you've seen and, and maybe in a basic manner? Yeah, sure. That's that's like my favorite conversation actually. So, you know, most people see a robot and the first thing they say to themselves is, oh, wow, that robot's probably expensive. It's probably 50, 75, $100,000. I've asked people, how much do you think it costs before I start talking to them? And they always say, throw out these crazy numbers. And I always laugh to them and I look back and I say, what if I told you it only costs two to $3 an hour to operate a robot? And their jaw pretty much falls to the floor, right? And they're like, I don't get it. Explain that to me. So let me try to explain it to you so you understand as well in, the, in our audience. So the robot comes and what we do is we sell it in what we call a RAS model. Robot as a service It's kind of like a sales as a service, a SaaS model in which we will charge you a monthly fee to have this robot. And in that monthly fee, it includes everything. The robot, the warranty, the maintenance, the ongoing warranty, of course, the services, all, this, all the reporting, all the software upgrades for the length of the term of the agreement. And typically we do it in a 12, 24 and 36 month agreement. So with those numbers, um, you know, it, it, they're all different depending on what, what time, but you're look, typically literally looking at a two to three dollar an hour uh, robot that can work up to 12 to 18 hours a day. Now, if it works 12 hours a day, it's about two to three dollars an hour. If it works 18 hours a day, it's less than two dollars an hour, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Now, in senior living, what I've seen is that most of the places don't are not open for 12 hours. Most of them are open between eight and 10 hours of actual operation where they have maybe a breakfast and then a lunch and then a dinner with some spots in between that they're not open. And so you typically want to compare that accordingly against a full time employee or whatever that full time employee is at 12 to 18 dollars an hour. Now, as I was telling you earlier, I said to you, um, what if our servers can go from four tables to six tables? And that's the key. If I can go from four tables to six tables, technically, I don't need those other two servers. Now, I'm not letting them go. They're just, quite frankly, they don't exist today because today we call them C servers, right? There's A servers, B servers, and C servers. And today our C servers are no longer around because they're out. They decided this is not for them. They don't want to do this anymore. And our A's and B's are working five, six, seven days a week 
40, 50 hours a week and they're killing themselves. And the robot comes in and he's obviously saying, listen, I'm going to give you a little bit bigger stations to start, but we're going to have a better quality of life, right? You're not going to have to walk as much, not as, as lift as much and so on. And you're going to be able to um, uh, to utilize this robot and and only and only hopefully have only be able to work 40 hours a week. So with that said, um, a full time employee in most senior living is 12 to 18 an hour in restaurant side. It goes anywhere from two dollars and 13 cents an hour all the way up to fifteen dollars an hour in places like California. So what I've seen and we have numbers to show this, but we've seen robots saving people. Um, I got a little graph here in front of me. I'll just read a couple for you just as an ideology. If you had a server that made three fifty an hour, three dollars and fifty cents an hour. If you use Survey, you'll save $4,500 a year, period. Just $4,500, just off one server making $350 an hour, working 12 hours a day. If you had same server made $8 an hour, you would save $24,000 uh, a year in using Survey. And then lastly, just to throw a bigger number out there at you um, to give it some ideology here is $15 an hour. You save $54,732 by using the robot. So we tell people our robot has an ROI starting on day one. There's not this huge cost to get involved. It's a very simple number to kind of start. It's a monthly fee going onward. And depending on what you do on your staffing side, you literally start um, paying that robot starting. It's paid off like on day one. And most people can't say that about, about robots in general. Why did you decide to go the RAS route instead of selling them outright? Yeah, so I, I kind of touched on it a little bit when I spoke earlier. It's literally about um, the upfront cost is the, is the first reason that helps, the, of course, the customer themselves, but that's not the only reason. The number one reason was is, be, is that we don't know where robotics is going to be three years from now, right? Pretty soon these robots could have arms and legs and who knows, right? You've seen some of the stuff that's out there. Well, why do I want to buy something that literally in two or three years is basically considered a, you know, a flip phone when it comes to cell phones, right? So we like to say, let's just keep you in a monthly program, which gives you all the services that we need. It allows all of our field ops teams to be out there to help you when and if that time comes to help you uh, from a consultation perspective all the time. And then more importantly, more than anything else, it's um, is that I'm going to get a brand new robot after three years on whatever the latest and greatest features and upgrades are and uh that the the no the no upfront investment basically and the roi happening on day one those are the reasons why we decided to do a ras model what job functions can survey perform so survey actually uh, can perform many functions uh, we kind of label them and we call them use cases the first one is typically food running. That's obviously going from an expo to a table or to a section or an area, for example, in a senior living facility or restaurant. Um, we also can do busing where the robot can actually act uh, in a way where it kind of cruises around, if you will. It can be sent directly to tables. It can be called to a table from a tablet or sent from a tablet or a remote type device. Um, but in general, we typically have that robot cruise around and stop in basically strategic areas within the facility. And while it's in that area, it's around four, five, six, seven tables that are potentially dirty. And it allows the servers to be able to pre-bus obviously tables as well as completely bus them so that we can actually turn tables faster. But guess what? Those servers don't have to walk all those trays and all those plates back and forth to the dish area. Let the robot do all of that. Again, allowing servers to spend more time out front. The other one is we have a, a hostess mode, which is kind of cool. Um, if you wanted to actually have the robot seat people, it can. It can talk to you on the way to the table. It can, when it gets there, it can give you a whole spiel like, thank you for dining with us tonight. Um, your server will be right with you. Enjoy your meal and then turn around and head back to where you came from, uh, back to the hostess station. So that's a third option. Um, and then, of course, there's another one, and it's actually really prevalent in senior living, and it's called patrol mode. And patrol mode is very similar to that busing mode I was talking about, but it's typically used in a happy hour environment. Or for example, there's a lot of senior living that have a happy hour prior to dinner. And they obviously will fill you up with wine and or they wanna have hors d'oeuvres and they wanna send them around. Um, we also find that during movie night or bingo night or card night, and you want to send snacks around or bottles of water or things like that, this robot can actually cruise around the facility, stop at certain places for periodic times and allow the, the actual residents to grab their own drink or snack or popcorn or wine or whatever it is that they want. So it's a really cool mode and used a lot on the senior living side. 
How does Survey know when to go to the expo line or dish room? When our folks come out and do our installation, they will um, set up, of course, the expo line, the dish pit, we call it. Uh, we have one called the hostess, for example. But that robot actually has sensors built into the trays themselves. And so what happens is, is that when it's at the expo and I want to send it to a table, say table 12, I simply just press the, the button that says 12 and hit go, and that robot goes to table 12. It's smart enough that when it gets to table 12 and the server then removes the food, it recognizes that there was weight on me and now all of a sudden there isn't. And when that weight has been removed, it will automatically go back to where it came from. So the answer to your question is, it will literally go back to wherever it came from automatically or manually. And if you wanted to, you can obviously change it. So if it came out to a table, and then for some reason you wanted to send it to another table right from there, you could manually do that as well. How quickly can a community receive a survey once initial payment is received? So it takes about uh, two weeks once ordered for us to actually ship and get the robot on site. So we always like to say we have a two week lead time, of course, and this depends uh, on what time of the year it is and how busy we are. But in general, we hit within two weeks almost every time. Uh, once we're on site, we actually do a full blown install. The install takes anywhere between two and three days. It doesn't take that long to install. It takes about two hours to do the actual install, but then we spend the next two days with you, making sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to, and that if you have any changes in your workflow and your, in your process, we will handle all of that for you. So Jim, uh, one thing that I know happens in senior living is they change the configuration of the dining room fairly often. Is this the local staff able to reprogram the map on their own, or do they need to call the service desk? So as of today, um, the map is something that we control through what we call the universe. It's basically a cloud-based system. And so uh, when we create a map, what we like to do is work out all the different what if scenarios. So we like to say, hey, listen, if you know you're gonna take this room and you occasionally during the fall change it to be like this, tell us now um, so that we can obviously reference that when we when it's time. But in general, uh, we're gonna wanna map this out and it's gonna need a field operator in order to do that. The good news is we have the remote, oper um, remote diagnostics capability, meaning we can actually go into the robot sitting at our office or anybody in the country, one of our field operators, and actually make changes to the map manually. So yes, we can do it. It's not always ideal because we don't know exactly the right spot that that thing was moved, but we have an idea. And, uh, and so it can be done, but that's why we want to have field operators based all over the country. Mechanically, how long does survey last on a charge? Um, does it have a docking station? Uh, it, it, does it need a consistent Wi-Fi connection for daily operation? Just talk a little bit about the maintenance um, of the device itself. Sure, so Survey works up to 12 hours on a single charge, but it can also go up to 18 hours if you charge it um, systematically throughout the day. For example, it only needs four hours to get fully recharged, but if you wanted to charge it for one hour, two hours, you can get yourself an extra six. So we have we have facilities, for example, and most times in senior living specifically, they're they're shut down between lunch and dinner, and they'll literally just charge the robot for an hour or two and get themselves an extra six and you add that to 12 and you could get literally 18 hours if you do it right. Um, and especially in a, even in a normal restaurant, anytime between two and four, your slow periods, charge the robot up and you get yourself an extra six hours. Uh, the robot does use Wi-Fi in order to connect to our universe. However, um, it is not required the entire time in order to operate. So we tell people, yes, you should have Wi-Fi. And yes, it should be really good Wi-Fi for when it's uploading software, uploading and downloading reporting and all the things that come with the robot. But in general, it does not need great Wi-Fi to go from point A to B. So once we upload that software and that map into the cloud and then it comes back into the robot, it's kind of like its brain. It knows where it's going. It doesn't need anybody to tell it anymore um, and it will go back and forth. But in general, you, when it when it docks and it charges for the night, and it gets those software updates and all those other things and it has to download those, those uh, reports, it's gonna have to have Wi-Fi. Um, does it need maintenance? You know, the good news about the robot is literally, it's only two wheels that are turning and then there's two other wheels that are actually keeping it from, you know, falling over, if you will. 
but there's only two wheels that are moving. So there's no oil, there's no gas, there's no chains, there's no nothing. Um, and so the great part about the robot is, is that for the most part, it's kind of bulletproof. What are the limitations? What can't Servi do? That's another great question. So uh, like like all great technologies, there's always going to be some limitations. And, and so here they are, and we actually go through this every time we're talking to a senior living facility and or restaurant, we typically do a presentation. And during that presentation, we discuss the following things. So number one, um, it, it's all about the thresholds, right? The actual transition between one floor and another. So coming from the kitchen into the dining room, coming from one dining room into another dining room, there's a little threshold that's there. That threshold needs to be a quarter of an inch or less. The second one is doors, kitchen doors, that is. We do not open doors. This robot is very safe. It will not hit people, nor will it hit a door or a wall or a table or anything else for that matter. And so because of that, it's going to be required that the facility leaves the door open and it's propped open at all times. Um, you can uh, there's third party solutions out there because I know people concerned sometimes with doors. There are third party solutions that have sensors where the robot goes right by it and the door opens automatically. They're out there. Um, there's something that you can install yourself if if opening keeping the doors open is going to be a problem. We, uh, we don't do outdoor patios. The robot does not go outside today. It will down the road, that's something we're working on, but today it will not go outside. Why? Because the sunlight will affect the LIDAR or the light radar that's coming out of the bottom of it. It's kind of like looking up into the sun without sunglasses on. So it will blind it. And when that happens, the robot sees it immediately and goes, uh-oh, I'm not moving another inch because I don't know where I'm at. So it literally will turn and go back to where it came from. So outdoor patios are not good uh, for us, but we can deliver to the patio door. Again, the ideology behind that is let the server spend their time on the patio with the guests and then deliver to the doorway. I can see the doorway. I can see when my food comes and I can go grab it. So it's not that big of a limitation, even though it is. Um, so we obviously don't do pull decks for the same exact reason, et cetera. Jim, we have a senior living community in South Florida in Bradenton and they intentionally bought Servi to put into an unstaffed bistro that they were renovating. And, and I thought it was a pretty forward thinking thing to do. Have you seen any other real creative uses of Servi other than your standard table service? What, what are some creative ways that senior living communities are using Servi? In the senior living space, the coolest thing I've ever seen is they literally loaded it up with wine. And, and they put these wine glasses, these small little wine glasses on it, and they sent it out to the, to the middle of the room. And all of these people walked over to it and grabbed their wine glass. When in before, they would walk up to the bar and they would wait one after the other to get their wine. And I said, this is cool. And then, and then it, it delivered the first wine and then it came back to the bar to get some more stuff. What did she do? She took an ice bath and to put it in the bit, bottom bin and she literally put beers in the bottom bin of uh, in a nice bath so they were nice and cold then in the top one she literally grabbed four or five bottles of wine that were already open and she put them in there and she put it in patrol mode and sent it back onto the floor the difference was she wasn't going to let the the seniors actually pour their own wine she was going to go out there and play cocktail server herself basically bartender on wheels so she walked around and she literally the robot stopped and she goes can i get you a refill ma'am and she would grab one wine and fill it up and then she didn't have to carry anything she didn't have to lift everything and she provided that level of service to those folks and how do you think they felt in comparison to what they've done before so really cool creative stuff out there and people can just just uh you know use your imagination Jim, thanks again for joining us today and helping us better understand Servi and all the exciting things that are happening in the world of robotics in senior living communities. If you would like more information about Servi or hospitality technology solutions that Serving Intel provides, you can reach out to us at the locations on the screen. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Because You Asked. Have an amazing day.